Welcome to another weekly vlog. So I'm gonna be vlogging this week, Monday, March 7th through the 13th. And I, it's Monday today, this morning, I am just making breakfast. So I'm just gonna show what, I'm just gonna show how I make my oatmeal because that's what I'm making today. So first of all, I use this maple and brown sugar, lower sugar kind. Um, the instant oatmeal. So I just put it in my bowl and then I put a little bit of almond milk and a little bit of water and put it in the microwave for about a minute and a half. And it's usually pretty good. And then I add Biscoff, add this Biscoff crunchy cookie butter. I add just a little spoonful of that in it and it makes it really yummy. Okay, this is my oatmeal and I'm gonna eat some cinnamon applesauce too, but I haven't put my Biscoff in it. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, here it is with the Biscoff in it. It looks pretty much the same, but it tastes way better with that little scoop. Okay, I got this package in the mail, so I thought I would open it real quick. I think it's my Allie Edwards order. Yes, pieces of the past. So I wanted to show what I ordered with it. So I got the booklet, and then I got this little pin. Each each um, pieces project, you get a different pin that you can put on your gray folio that this goes in. So this one for pieces of the past is this cute little yellow and white and gold butterfly. And then, and then lastly, it comes with this little stamp set. So it says pieces of the past, looking back, childhood memories, remembering, one piece of my story. I remember school memories looking back. I see my childhood, this memory, best memory, my parents, my parent. A challenging chapter, remembering growing up I loved on my own childhood dreams, pieces of my history. Okay, so I wanted to show the pieces unpackaged or unwrapped. So this is the pen for pieces of the past. It's really cute. I love this the most. The other pins they had, they had this little heart for the pieces of me. And then this one was pieces of home, this little house. It's really cute. And then this one will be for pieces of the past. And then the um, front, uh, this is the folio. This is the gray folio that they give you to keep your little traveler's notebooks in, and they give you this little, um, or not give you, they offer this patch that you can buy that says pieces of life. Um, and I'm hoping that I can fit this pieces of the past notebook in here as well and have all three together, but I'm not sure if it will fit. So I might have to end up getting another one of these uh, gray like folios. So let me open this. I wanted to show you the um, pieces of me and the pieces of home little booklet. I haven't completed this yet, but I'm wanting to before April because that's when the documenting week for pieces of the past is going to be. So let me show you quickly what is in this pieces of the past notebook and then I'll show you my, my stuff. So the schedule is day one, family of origin, day two, most loved toy, day three, a childhood adventure, Day four, education. Day five, a challenging chapter. Day six, best childhood memory. Day seven, looking back, I see. Um, so those are the prompts for every day. And here's some thoughts on each prompt. So it goes into that and a reminder. And then each day you have like a little 
square for a picture or embellishments or journaling and then you've got a square on the top and then you have the prompt and a place for you to put the day that you're uh, documenting this and then down here you can do journaling picture whatever you want embellishment and then they have like a little long page over here and then for each day they have another page for that day if you have multiple pictures or you have more journaling or embellishments you want to add with it you can or you can just take these together and just have one page for each prompt so then it goes into the next prompt and so on and then at the back I think it just has some extra pages yeah so at the very back of it it has you know the one page for that prompt and then it has an extra two three pages so and that is the pieces of the past. This is going to be really difficult for me because I have terrible memory. So I'm glad that I have this now because I'm going to try to think of ideas for each of these prompts leading up to that week so that I'm not like scrambling. Because I want to tell actually good stories and good memories. So I'll have to think about this up until then. And I think the documenting week is April. I think it's the second week in April. Um, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up and I'll pop it into this video. So if you want to get this and document along with me and the community, you can. Um, so let me quickly open this and I'll show you my, what I have so far. Okay, here's my first page. <laughs> so pieces of me, I did that little stamp and then uh, these feet I titled around it and put a picture of me on my yoga mat. And deep breaths. I thought that went along with doing yoga. And then me with my feet propped up reading. And then other pictures of my feet. Me walking Reese. Me propping my feet up in my fuzzy socks. Relaxing. And then the next page. Hold on one second. And then the next prompt is um, hands. So there's a picture of me holding hands with Crystal, walking through our neighborhood. It's really pretty. I loved the background of this, so I um, chose that one. And then me holding up the bookmark that says create against the sky. I thought that was really cute. And then this one, I stamped hands in the background repeatedly with uh, different color ink. And this one is just a really light pink. So you can see it better in person. It doesn't really come up on camera as well, but it just says hands repeated. And then this is me, I repeated at the bottom and I took little pictures of the hand pictures that I took. Um, and I posted this on Instagram. So I made this way after the fact. So that way I could really just focus on my pictures and my journaling. I just posted on Instagram and then I document it in my um, notebook and my traveler's notebook later when I have time. And then the next one is uh, face forward. So I just took a bunch of pictures of me and put it in this little grid so that I could just have one photo of all the little uh, facial expressions of me. And then I put loving myself exactly as I am. And I had to stamp over it because the first time didn't take all the way and you couldn't read what it said. So when I stamped over it, it kind of made this effect where it's like, um, like shadowing itself. So... I think it turned out cool. Like it looks like it kind of is supposed to be that way. So I went with it. Um, and then under my journaling, I put embracing all of me at the bottom. Um, and I just took the journaling that I put on my Instagram for this. And then the next page, I just continued that journaling over here. And then this was a background of a piece of like transparent paper, like a vellum paper that I had stamped on and done like uh, different layers. I took like paint and did stamps with, um, or not stamps, stencil. Ugh, can't even talk. I took stencils and put them on this vellum paper uh, that's translucent with paint. And then I took a brayer and uh, covered the paint over the stencils and pulled it up and did like various layers. And I thought that this one would be a cool background. So, cause it's got like kind of like a little sunset. It was a sunset stamp or stencil. Um, so I don't know if you can see it, but it was a, a little like sun rays that were going out. So I just put this heart pieces of me, this story, this life embracing my story, this brain 
and then put like a little, you know, embellishment there. And then that is as far as I got. I, I did cut out a picture. I printed out this picture of me with my eyes closed, but I never did any of the other prompts. And then the only other picture I printed out was my reflection picture, I think at the back of me in front of my makeup mirror. And I thought this picture was like especially amazing. Like I thought I was a full on professional photographer with this picture because my phone is on my table facing upward, facing my little makeup mirror, my little one right here. And then you catch the mirror on the actual table on my actual vanity, which is this with my bulb lights. So it's like bouncing off the reflection off of my little mirror from this big mirror. Cause I'm sitting down, I don't know if I can explain this well, but basically I'm sitting at my vanity looking into this mini little mirror, but the back of the, of this mini mirror is a mirror. So this big one with the bulb lights is reflecting that image of me in this one on this little one from my phone, which is down below. It was like right here below this. So I just thought it was so cool because it has like this little mirror in it and then this one and then this big one with the bulb lights and I'm putting on my makeup. I just thought it was really cool for reflection. So, um, I was really proud of myself for that one, <laughs> but I printed that one out. I just never finished it. And then pieces of a home, I haven't even started. I did do the prompt and I have all my pictures and journaling posted on my Instagram. So if you want to check out those pictures and journalings um, or pictures and journaling, you can check out my Instagram at the lipstick living and see what kind of pictures I took and the journaling that I did for them. If you're interested in like doing this project yourself, because I posted all of the pieces of me and all of the pieces of home pictures. And I plan on doing the pieces of the past as well in April. And then the stamping that we, that we got with it, this is the pieces of home stamp set. And then this is the pieces of the past. And I have the pieces of me, but I'm using it right now. So some of them are like missing on it and they have like ink all over it and it looks crazy. So I will show that in a later clip, but it basically is the same layout as this. It has like a big stamp that says pieces of me. And then it has like a little heart like this that says um, loving myself or something. I used it in here. Here it is, loving myself exactly as I am. So it's like got a little heart like that and then a big pieces of me that I used for the first page right there. And then it's got the little, you know, little stamps with it. So yeah, so that's the pieces of, pieces of life collection that I have. Okay, I just got home from work a little bit ago and I filmed my pieces of me little book, but I, started to get dinner ready and then I realized um, that, well, Crystal's not home yet. She is at the gym right now. So, or actually she's at her row class across the street. So she'll be home probably in like 10 minutes or so and then we can start dinner. So I'm just kind of getting it prepared for that. And I went to go look at the meals for this week because we started getting HelloFresh again. We had, we're just kind of tired. We were in like a rut. We were tired of the same kind of meals and we wanted new ones, new recipes to try. So tonight's recipe is actually, it sounds really good. It's mushroom and herb shepherd's pie. So this is what it looks like. I've never had anything like it. So I'm really excited to try that and I'll show what it looks like in the end and let you know if it's good. But anyway, I went to go to my HelloFresh uh, app and I realized that I needed to check my email. So I went to my email and realized that Go Wild had still not responded to me when I asked them how to do the virtual option for Go Wild, which has already ended now. It was the third through the sixth, I believe. So um, today's the seventh, so it ended yesterday. And I had received an email from them maybe a week or two before the event saying that they were not gonna be able to resell our tickets if we can't go and um, that we could choose a virtual option if we're not going in person. So I signed up for the virtual option that day and it gave information on the Go Wild app. So I downloaded the app and the app did not have any kind of like 
information about how to look at the speakers. I don't know if they recorded it and maybe we'll be able to watch it later. And maybe they never said that they were gonna send us our swag, but they did say that that might be an option for them mailing it to us since we couldn't go. So I'm hoping that they'll do that, but I, re I reached out to them on the 3rd, on March 3rd, the day that the event started and said, hey, I downloaded the app, I signed up for virtual option and I have not received any other email since. And the event is starting today and I really would like to participate virtually. So if you could let me know how to do that, please soon so that I can participate. And I still have not received a response and that was four days ago. I did receive an initial response saying, we received your email we'll get back to you, but I haven't received anything else since then. So, and I've checked my junk, I've checked my spam. And so I'm just, I just wanted to quickly say, I am very disappointed with this entire situation. I think that it was handled really poorly. I think their response of, oh, we can't resell your ticket. We can't give you a refund back. We can't even hold it for next year's. I even asked if I could just hold my ticket and go to the 2023 go wild. And that wasn't an option either. I literally thought of everything because I spent $650 on these tickets because I signed up for the budget boot camp as well. That was an extra event with the go wild event. So I signed up for an entire like boot camp that I am not getting now because I could not fly all the way to California. Um, especially with like just it, it it sucks because they pushed it to a month where it's like really cold and not even a good time to be in California. The hotel was already completely booked. So when I went to look at places nearby, I couldn't find anything that was affordable that was actually close to the hotel. So when I was like trying to decide if it was even worth it to go, it just wasn't, you know, in the end. And so I reached out saying like, is there anything I can do to resell? Is there anything I could, could I even hold my ticket for next year or just get like half of a refund? You know, like, can I not lose $650? Can I just get half of it back since I'm canceling, you know, late notice or whatever, but that wasn't an option. And so I feel like the whole time they've just been not willing to work with me and it is really, really shitty and really upsetting that I've spent over, I think it was over 650 on the ticket and I'm not getting anything out of it. And I tried to, I tried signing up for the virtual option. I got nothing in my email with directions on how to do that. Like how to log into anything to see any uh, live speakers that they recorded or anything. Like I didn't get any info. I signed up for the virtual option and then crickets. Same thing when I downloaded the Go Wild app, I didn't see anything on there about watching events like watching speakers speak or, you know, whatever. Um, I didn't receive any information on it. And then I emailed them the day of, uh, on the third and haven't heard back. And now the event's over because it ended yesterday. So it's like, it's just, I, I don't know. And then I logged in on the, um, go wild app and saw that Aaron Condren was like the main, there was like a booth and all this stuff. And if you're a planner person in the community, you obviously know, the whole thing about Aaron Condren. And so that just already put, that put a poor taste in my mouth too. I'm just like, this is, I'm just, I'm really uh, upset and I don't think I will ever be purchasing anything from Go Wild. I will never be going to that planner event. I will never be purchasing any, uh, you know, like they have a Go Wild U, which is like a university thing that you can pay for. And it's basically like, a monthly subscription to these videos. I don't know what it all entails, but anyway, I will definitely not be signing up for that. I thought about it before, but now with this experience and losing that amount of money, I will not support this company in any way. And I just wanted to share that because I've never had an experience like this. I've never lost that amount of money to a company over like this whole, you know, COVID and all of this. It's just shocking and it really sucks. But I don't know. I'm just, I'm done with my rant, but I just had to rant about it and share my thoughts about the Go Wild experience. And if you have had a similar experience, please comment below and tell me um, that I am not alone. <laughs> Look at this tiny little mushroom. It's so little. It looks like a tiny little brain. So weird. Here it is. I'm taking it out. We cooked it in a cast iron skillet that my mom gave me. What if I just me. dropped it? No, God. 
Okay. Hopefully it doesn't break the counter. I mean the like, we made a huge mess. <laughs> That's the pot we cooked the mashed potatoes in. But this is what it looks like. Yum. It actually looks really good. It do. Okay, here's what it looks like served in a bowl. I'm obviously having wine and my water. And we're watching The Office. <laughs> okay, it is Tuesday the 8th and I woke up late so I made coffee and I ate a muffin cup and I'm drinking the rest of my coffee now and then I'm going to hop in the shower and um, then I have to go to work for a little bit but then I have a dermatology appointment at 10 so I'm going to do that and then my work is actually doing this really cute thing where we're having this women's chat for it's only a 30 minute call but it's for International Women's Day today and um, we're just like chatting and they have I think some speakers that are going to speak some women that are like leaders or maybe higher up in the in our company or something so I think it'll be cute okay I just got out of my dermatology appointment and she said that everything looked great and um, I don't have to come back for I was coming um, every month for a while to treat my acne and then I started going quarterly and I've done that I think this is my third time doing it quarterly but she said that I don't have to come back anymore except to do like you know a body scan every few years or something so I did schedule a body scan for um, in like a couple of weeks uh, so I'll come back for that but for my acne my face I am pretty good to go so I'm just gonna stay on the same cream that she gave me the um, I have like a gel that I put on in the morning and a foamy cream that I put on. What's well, more like a foamy, it's like a foam to oil uh, that I put on in the evening. And that gel I can use for like spot treatments, like this little spot I had on my nose. Um, so every, she said everything looked great. So I'm really excited. I feel like I've overcome such a big thing. I know it's like really small, uh, you know, to have acne. That's not like a big issue, but to me it felt really big just because I had never had acne before and then I started getting it at age 23 which most people have that in high school so I um it was just weird for me to be an adult having acne and I also was like really into skincare I still am and makeup and so for me to be really into that and not be able to feel like that I can't use skincare because it upsets my skin and um not be able to put on makeup because that upsets it it just kind of like made me lose my love for makeup and skincare and I feel like I'm finally starting to get that back so that's just really nice um I also feel more comfortable in my skin I feel more confident to go out without makeup on I even uh don't wear makeup to work like one or two days a week to let my skin rest so um that's really nice like yesterday I didn't wear any makeup all day to work and I still felt I didn't feel I used to feel so hideous without makeup on and now I don't feel like I look you know beautiful or anything but I feel more confident and I don't feel bad about myself so that's a start and I'm just really proud of myself and I wanted to share that because I think it's really important to feel confident and to be proud of yourself for things for growth and you know having the confidence to or just the drive to go and get it fixed you know like I struggled with acne for two years and didn't go to the dermatologist and now I feel like I, you know, I, I, I could have ended this a long time ago, but I just didn't, I felt so, um, it was like very debilitating. So I felt like I didn't want to like take the time to go. So I just didn't take the, I didn't make the effort to schedule the appointment and actually go. And now that I've done that, I just feel really great. And, um, now my next step is to find a therapist and schedule that because I've been putting that off for the past two years too. I started looking for a therapist right before COVID happened and I went to two sessions and then COVID hit and we couldn't go in person, but I wasn't going to go back to that therapist anyway, just because she was very young, um, inexperienced. She had just graduated college and it felt weird to me. It just didn't feel like a good fit. So I am going to look 
for therapists, I have reached out to a place that's like right down where I live. So it's like right down the street. I could walk there. And so I reached out to them twice and didn't hear back. So I think that they are just either really, really busy or um, full, you know, and they don't have any spots open. But so I'm still looking for one. Hopefully I can find one in Raleigh that's closer or somewhere I could walk. That would be incredible. So we will see. But yeah, I just wanted to share that about my skin journey. Good morning. It is Thursday, March 10th, and Crystal left a little bit earlier this morning to go take Reese to the vet because she is getting her teeth cleaned today. So she's going to have to, you know, they have to put them to sleep to do that. So anyway, I'm kind of nervous to see, like, I hope he doesn't have to pull any or I hope the surgery goes well and everything, but she took her um, this morning. So she should be home any minute now. And then I have to hurry up and get ready for work. But I just wanted to check in because I, I don't think I checked in yesterday except for videoing my outfit. So I, um, it's been a little busy this week, so I haven't been, um, doing much like other, other than going to work and coming home, making dinner, doing my normal routines. I haven't really, really been doing much else for the past, um, two days. So I just want to check in. I'm doing my morning routine right now, and then my hair is crazy. It just, it is what it is. I'm, I haven't gotten ready. Okay, I forgot to take a video in my lobby, but I just wanted to show what I'm wearing today. So, I just have some flats and work pants and a sweater because it's cold and rainy today. <laughs> so, good morning. It's Friday the 11th, and Crystal and I were talking about our dreams that we had last night. Tell them what your dream was. People kept floating away. <laughs> <laughs> people on earth kept floating away and it would get so it was so bad that they would stay up for so long <laughs> that they, it was a class that they had to take that would instruct them how to control their floating better did they die no but they got, <laughs> had to take a floating glass close to it because she got she went yeah there is you said wait she went so high that what i think she was running out of oxygen <laughs> And my dream was that my niece, Shannon, was going to bed. We were staying at her house with Crystal's sister. I guess we were, like, visiting in the dream or something. We were staying over. And so, Crystal and I were sleeping out in the living room on, like, an air mattress or something. And um, Sandy, like, Shannon wouldn't go to sleep. And so, um, it was, like, past midnight. And so, Sandy put her in the living room with us to sleep on the couch. And so, I was, like, trying to get her to go to sleep. And she wouldn't. And then finally she did and then woke up again at like two or three in the morning and was like running around being crazy. And Sandy came back in the living room and was like, oh yeah, I usually about two or three in the morning, I let her just like get out of bed and run around and be crazy and play and stuff. And I was like, oh my God. She was like, oh, it won't be long, just like an hour or so. <laughs> I was like, Sandy, I cannot do this. Um, but that was it. That's all my dream was. And then I had another one, but I can't remember enough of it to tell it. It just, I can see me being in like a high school gym for whatever reason. I don't know why I was there or what I was, I think maybe I was performing because I had like a costume on, um, like a dance costume or something, but. Reese is very interesting. I know. Reese is like, excuse me, excuse me, I would like some attention. <laughs> Okay, I look crazy, but ignore it. I'm going to go get ready in just a minute after I eat my breakfast. Um, but I just wanted to say that I have my third interview, my final. Well, actually, it's really like my second interview. I had a first interview uh, two weeks ago, and then she gave me a project to do that was due that next week. And I turned that in. And then she finally called me about it and said that I passed to the next round. So... Um, I think this will be the final interview. This is with my manager's manager if I were to get this position. So I, I do know her and I've worked with her before. So I'm not like super nervous because I do know her. And I think, I think I've I prepared well for my first interview. So I think it'll be similar to that. Maybe a little bit harder. But um, I have like interview questions that I printed out and my answers and stuff. So anyway, I have that today. 
at three, but I get to leave work at two because I have an event for my residents tomorrow. And so to make up the time, I'm leaving a little early, but the only interview time they had was three. So I'm just gonna do it at home. So that is my agenda for today. But if I do get this position, I'll be moving to Charleston in like two weeks. Okay, I just finished my interview. I think the actual interview went well. I don't think that I answered anything wrong. I, I think that I spoke clearly and intellectually. I just feel like when there is a man that is um, very direct and not friendly, and you know, you might think of him as like a go-getter and a hard worker and has tough skin and you might associate those things as really great, even though he might just be an asshole. But because they see a more positive look into his directness, um, it works. Okay, I'm editing this video. So I, this is editing me. I am sitting on my couch. I look disgusting. Ignore this scab on my face. Anyway, I'm just here to say that what I was trying to get across in my rant about women in the workplace is that no matter what men do, they are always perceived as something positive. If they are very direct and aggressive, they're deemed as very, they are go-getters, they are hard workers, they want to get a good, uh, they want to get the job done and they want to do it, want it done well. Um, if they are sensitive, then it's like, oh, they're very passionate about their job. They, they want to, um, know that they're doing well in it because they care so much and, um, oh, he's sensitive. Like, it's a great thing. But when women do anything, no matter what they do, no matter if they are, um, sensitive and more empathetic, it's, it's deemed as a bad thing. It's perceived as, oh, well, she's going to get offended by everything. She's too sensitive. She can't take a joke, etc. But when she's direct and gets the job done and wants it done well, then she's perceived as a bitch. So it's like, you can't fucking win. As a woman, you can't ever win. And that's just my take on how women are perceived in the workplace. And I also want to add, I, ha I work for one of the best companies ever. I love my company so much. I've worked for them for five years now. And I've worked for them the longest I've ever worked for any other company, but I did work for one other management company, Graystar, for about three years. And then I worked for another company called Bell for not even, I think, like half a year. So I um, worked for those two companies, and this one that I'm working for now is by far the best. Like, they're very, I mean, they don't say it, but they're very liberal. Like you can tell that they have a liberal stance. They're based out of Baltimore, Maryland. They're very accepting. So um, anyway, my, my whole gist is that I am by no means uh, complaining about my company at all. I just feel like no matter how great your company is, any someone in, you know, whether it be your coworker or your direct manager or supervisor, whatever, whoever, at some point when you are a woman in the workplace, you are gonna either be deemed as too sensitive or too bitchy. You can't win. <laughs> and it just sucks. And I and not that I felt that I perceive I was perceived that way in my interview at all. I just was ranting about it because I it was women's history month and my work did this like really amazing work call. It was like a coffee chat. I think I mentioned it in the video already, but that was amazing. And we got to hear women speakers who are leaders within our company. And it was really great and uplifting and I loved it. And I love my company a lot. So this rant was by no means talking about my company in any bad way. I just want to put that out there. I was just ranting about how women are perceived sometimes and how it just sucks and I just wanted to put that out there because I feel like we don't talk about it enough and I am sorry if you've ever been called too sensitive or too bitchy. You are not too anything. If you are going to your job and you are working hard and you're trying, you're, you're giving it your best, then you are everything and good job. So just keep doing what you're doing and it will pay off eventually. 
Um, also, I just wanted to say that I did get the position. So I, uh, the interview, I guess, did go well. So I did get the position and I will be moving to Charleston in a couple, of, literally a couple of weeks. It's March 20th today and I am gonna be moving there, I think the weekend of like April 8th or something. So it's happening very fast. I just found out my start date is April 11th. I found that out today. So I have a lot to do, but um, I just wanna pop in and give a little more context because I didn't want it to be taken any certain way. Okay, I got two packages in the mail and I thought I would open them because opening packages is always fun and I feel like it'll make me feel better. So the first one is from Anecdote Candles and I heard about these candles from a podcast I listened to called Bad on Paper. She was recommending them to someone who was talking about, they had a guest on and she was talking about this eucalyptus and mint, I think, or this mint smelling candle that she loves because it's so fresh smelling and clean and she loves having it on um, burning in her house even if her house isn't like perfectly clean it makes her feel like it is and she was complaining saying that they had discontinued it and she was really sad about it and so the co-host Grace Atwood is her name she recommended an, a candle from Anecdote Candles and it's like a mint and eucalyptus one and she said that they would really love it so I was like oh I have to go get that and then when I went to go buy it I saw that a lot of their candles they had on sale and most of them were half off. So I bought a bunch of candles and then I got um, a package from One and Only Paper. She was having a warehouse sale as well. So I bought some things that were on sale. I can't remember what I got now. So this is like a fun little surprise. Okay, so it comes packaged like this. So that's nice. It has the crinkle paper, um, which I think you can recycle and that's uh, good because that means they're protected. So hopefully they aren't broken or anything. So they sent a little card. All right, so, and they are named really cute name. They have like very, very cute names for their candles too, which I loved and like really cute descriptions. Okay, so the first one, oh, this is the one I was talking about, the mint and eucalyptus. This is the reason why I went to their website and it's called Self Care, smells like face masks and do not disturb, love it. Okay, let me smell it. Oh my God, it smells amazing. It smells like a spa. Like, it truly, a spa is what it smells like. I can't wait to burn this in the bath. Oh, my God. I'm going to do that, like, ASAP. Okay, this one's called Farmer's Market. It smells like long lines and tote bags, ginger and meadow grass. Oh, my God. It smells so good. It smells like fall or, like, what do you think? Mm -hmm. It's like. It smells like cute on pie. Yeah, or, like, but different. Um, I definitely get the ginger and meadow smell it smells like it could fit for spring or fall don't you think yeah because it's got like a fresh smell to it as well I love the way they are like I love how cute it is it's just like in a little kind of like a mason jar with this tin Ooh. why'd you do that with the flowers I don't know they look really pretty they do look really pretty they're blossoming the lilies are lilies always still the shy okay and then this one it's called Basic. It smells like pumpkin, spice lattes, and cable knit sweaters. Pumpkin and cardamom. Mmm. I got this one. So these were on sale because these were the farmer's market and the basic one was from the fall collection they had in 2021. So these were all half off. So I was like, I have to get them. And I love fall scented candles literally any time of the year. So. Oh, yeah. It smells like a pumpkin spice latte. I got lipstick on it. Oh my God, it smells so, so good. Okay, then this one is called Bottomless Mimosas. It smells like good vibes and fresh gossip. Citrus and bergamot. Mmm, this smells like citrusy and there's like a hint of like, oh God, that's so good. I don't even know how to describe it. It's citrusy, like more, more like orangey citrus and then like a floral, like a orangey floral is what, how I would say. What do you say? That one's difficult to describe. A mimosa. Oh. I'm an idiot. Yeah. It, it really does truly smell like a mimosa. A really good mimosa. Mmm, that is so good. But also, like, if you were... Okay, let me set the scene. You're at the beach. Not actually on the beach, but you're at the beach visiting. You're on vacation at the beach. And you go into, like, a beachy kind of... A boutique -y store 
wouldn't you get the smell when you go in there? I suppose a cheaper version of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is obviously better than. No, no, no. I'm not talking like I said a, a boutique. I'm not talking like oh, those shitty wings. No, no, no. I'm talking like a nice this. boutique at the beach. It smells like beachy, but in like a nice, luxurious way. Yeah. Next is from One and Only Paper. <laughs> She wrote me a note and said, thank you so much for your order, Rachel. I hope you love it all. You snagged the last oranges notepad. <laughs> love, Allison. That was so sweet. Aww. Okay. What did I get? What's this? <gasps> I forgot I got this. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. I completely forgot I got this mug. She was having a warehouse sale, too, so I just got random stuff that was on sale. How cute is that? Mm -hmm. To put coffee in and it says good morning? I'm more concerned about where we're going to fit it in the cabinet. Well, we're going to have to make room for my mugs because I love mugs so much. It's like my favorite thing to get. And this with the yellow and the good morning is everything. I love that so much. Okay. And it's very like thick glass. It's very sturdy. And um, like it doesn't feel like it's going to like bust if there's like hot coffee in it or anything feels like high quality oh and it has like a soft bottom to where when you sit it down it's not um harsh like you could sit it down hard and it would be fine oh here's a little notepad that little orange notepad yeah i love it i thought it was super cute it's like the perfect size to leave in the kitchen for extra notes um to write down like things that you might need to pick up from the store or just reminders or whatever i thought that was cute and then I got this that was on sale. And I loved this so much. I almost got this back when she um, released it. I almost got it with my other stuff. But I had bought so much. I was like, okay, I've got to. So it's a little easel uh, desk calendar. So you have all the little mini calendars for the year. So this is the main page. And then you go into here. Let me just hold it to show. So this is January, February, March, April, So that's it. It's a cute little desk calendar for um, just like a little mini calendar set. So it just sits on this easel. Let me get March out. And this is really high quality, thick paper. So it's nice. It's pretty. Like you could use it in other stuff too. I thought about when I saw them, I thought it would be nice if you do bullet journaling, it would be cute to put on like your main page and do a theme around it. I was thinking about that because it's got like pretty metallics in it. I don't know if you can tell. See, um, so I thought maybe like for one month I could just like paste this in the middle of like on the left side of my bullet journal and then on the right side I could have like something incorporating this. Um, so I'm not sure for which month I'll do it, but I really like May. So maybe I'll do it for May because this is really pretty. I like that it's got like metallic -y little dots in the middle. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be, a cantaloupe? Maybe. Um, but it's really cute. I, I think that's adorable. And I have some new metallic pens that my mom got me. So I've been wanting to use those. So I think it would be cute to do like base a theme in my bullet journal off of one of these. And I think that's it. So here's my cute little mini haul. My happy mail for today. And I saw that Allison put a little sticker in my package that says Material Girl. <laughs> it's really cute and pink. I love it. Good morning. It is Saturday the 12th and I am just drinking coffee. I woke up a little late, um, but I do have to go to do a resident event. Um, but I live where I work, so I don't have to be there for another like 40 minutes. I am going to go get ready and I will try to video the event that we're doing. We're doing a breakfast event.
Look at the flowers. They bloom, so they're really pretty right now. And we're making lunch. We are, I'm finished with the event. I had a resident event this morning and it went really well. And then I just hung out for a little bit at the house. We watched some TV and then now we're making little paninis, mushroom and onion. Here, I'll show them. These paninis from HelloFresh. These are what they look like. They're the panini melts with potato wedges. They look so good. And then garlic aioli. Yum. Okay, so I fell asleep on the couch last night and uh, went to bed at like, we got up and went to bed probably around like midnight, 12.30. I didn't like do my skincare, so I look like a crackhead. So I, we just woke up now and it's, we lost an hour. So it's 11.22, but it feels like 10. Okay, Crystal went and got us rye. So I have the vegan chicken biscuit with a fried egg and cheese. And she got a... It's called a tree hugger. And okay, it's, so it's uh, gravy and biscuits without, and then like the fake sausage, whatever that veggie is. Veggie sausage. Veggies, yeah, but is it like beyond me? I don't know. Okay, well, anyway, that's what we're drinking. <clears throat> I mean, that's what we're eating for breakfast. I'm making dinner and Crystal is putting together her desk. It's almost done. I'll show you when it's completely done, but there's a snippet of it. Okay, here is the desk, finished. Okay, here's our dinner. It's way too much because we got the four serving one, but we can put <laughs> the leftovers that we have in um, the fridge and eat them for like lunch tomorrow. It looks good.